All right. It's the Cares None B Dope Podcast. I am your host, Chris Cares None, with my co-host, Darren Fisher. What's up, baby? What's going on, baby boy? Long time, long time. Man, man. As a matter of fact, that's gonna be a great episode. We're gonna explain why in a minute. But uh it's been it has been Lord, at least what a month and a half. Yeah, it's been a minute since we actually got the podcast, but we have kicked it though. We have kicked it. Yeah, yeah, we've kicked it quite a few times, but we haven't been on the pod. Yeah, we ain't um, been on the pod with it. We ain't let the people know what it is. Well, so what the issue is is the 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 studio we had. So it's kind of weird because the studio we had was at my crib, and I no longer have that. And but we were already in the midst of not doing it at the crib by doing it on location, right? But then I feel like the place that we did it, I didn't really like, I, I wasn't feeling the old total vibe and I didn't necessarily want to pay for something I don't feel good about. Right. You know, um, and then life just happened. And then, so, which is a great thing about this episode. It's so quick, it's so easy to lose, to lose that umph if you're not focused on keeping that umph. I feel like that's why, remember I called you, I'm like, man, I just got to be around you. I got to be around my killers because as soon as your, as soon as your whole, let's say a routine gets kind of thrown over, it's easy to lose track of that focus. So, but you got to like try to get back on. Yeah, that's why I say environment. When you came over that time, I was like, man, we chopped it up and it was smooth because of your environment. Your environment was where your head space needed to be. I think those two just weren't, those who were just not in the same place at the same time. And that's what you were going through during that time. So you just needed to get into an environment that was familiar because you were going through that move. You know, things were in turmoil with the with, with the environment. That just needs to be in place first and foremost. And we figured that out that day, honestly. Yeah, we did. And uh, yeah. things have been great ever since, man. But how you been, man? I see you making moves, bro. Yeah, man, I've been making moves. Pretty cool. Apes is officially in in go actually my website actually i got one more um update to do with my web developer today i have a meeting a zoom meeting at four and gonna get that going the win and it's live after that so i've been working hard man it's been great business so has been right now well it's like no it's live it's always live it's always live but i'm just saying as far as like me in my whole like wanting to come out with it and stuff like i'm about to start i'm about to actually start my um paying for my advertising like coming probably this week so that's what i mean it's like polished after today is going to be polished to the point where i'm comfortable enough to be like okay let me start putting the money towards my marketing strategy so i got my marketing strategist that i'm about to hire start paying her monthly and just continue to go with it and you say you're going for the big package right i gotta get i gotta go i gotta do it like this is the leg of it man we've been putting in the work this is this is the time where you really if you believe in your shit you got to put the dollars towards the marketing you got to put the dollars. That's probably just as much as you did it, uh, with with just the setup of it, you know? Right. You know, yeah. you know, it's actually probably more. Yeah, more. Yeah, even more. Even more. Yeah, but well, I was going to say, because some of these, like, you know, like with businesses and shit like that, they they go hard on advertising. They go super hard, bro. Like, it's not a game how much they go hard. And what and I like it, about it, as, as far as them going hard, though, what I do like about it and what's encouraging, especially with the way in which you're going about it, scaling through the you know digital means, is that everybody you don't need as you as you see you don't need that many people to support you for you to get this shit done and with the, within a lifestyle you know how much does a lifestyle cost actually for you to you know what I'm saying you don't need to have necessarily a Walmart's budget of marketing to get some feedback, right? You know it can be relative to whatever your budget is. You know what I mean? Right. So that's what I like about it a lot. And just these opportunities that we go on about it with. Yeah. And, and it's crazy because like, we don't realize it. Like if you, you have to advertise your stuff, like you have to let people know. Like, and, and right now we live in a good time where you can go on the internet and literally, I don't, I don't think people realize how powerful. Do you think people realize how powerful the internet really is? Nah, I don't think they do yet. I don't think they do conceptually just yet. It's still, it, it happens so fast. It's only a 20 year span where people really got the hold of this shit. People are still looking at this shit now as entertainment. Like the big wigs, they got it as business already and seeing what they can put even to Web 3.0 with this shit. 
like I think most of us are still consumers though, and we're still looking at it as just pure entertainment and not looking at it as a business. Like it's super, it's all business. It's crazy how much it is. So yeah, I, I agree. Right. Um matter of fact, after the next no yeah. Good. So um I sent you that link earlier, my mom's uh friends with the website. So I, I wanted to give you more a little detail on that real quick. So about this person, like my mom's friend, she's a person like this is like, for lack of better words, this is like hood ass chick, just like got some goddamn pit bull puppies or some bull puppies she trying to sell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is basically right. what, so she has this, this puppy she's trying to sell and she's like, man, I got these goddamn dogs. I don't know what I can do. My mom like, look, go to, go to Fiverr, hire some, hire these people, do this and blah, blah, blah. And this will take care of it. And she went on there, went to YouTube, found out what she needed, went to Fiverr, found out she needs to hire a web developer, a person to make a website, a this, a that, like, and sent it to my mama, like, does this look good? And she was like, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> like, but used right. her versus as this just regular hood chick from the South Side, just trying to sell some pit bull puppies, created a whole plush website. You saw that. So yeah. I was just like, man, I'm telling people, like, I don't care what it is. You can use this shit to all she has to do now is put the advertising towards it. You know what I mean? And but she understands like how to like to use the who's and not the how to try to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? And she's doing it digitally, like it looks so clean. I was like, man, if she can do this stuff, literally anybody can create any concept into a business. Into a business, right? Especially digital shit, like clean. Yeah, and and and, and that's the thing too. And that was a problem I dealt with in the beginning, is is like you don't realize how plush you can make it seem without even being like, like you can still be working on your behind the house, but your front of your show looks perfect. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And you don't need a Walmart budget. You don't need a, all of that, you know, not necessarily. Right, right. Big no, it, it, hold on a second. Damn. Are you going? No, oh, that's Mike says. Hey, keep, keep that up for me, all right? No, no, close it. Yeah, I'm set up in his garage right now. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do, baby. It's got, it's got the best uh, insulation in, in, in the whole place. I got you. I got you. I got you. It's going down right now. What you got What you got going on, baby? What's good? Talk to me. Huh? What you got going over there? Talk to me. Oh, my fault. The garage will go down. No, man. So, you know... I, I want to talk about because I've been struggling with some stuff. Talk to me, baby. And uh, and, and and not like, and I think we we already chimed in on it a little bit. But your environment, and like mm. I think it's so easy to lose, to lose to lose track. Or how about this momentum, or to get off track when something gets derailed for whatever reason, whether it's on purpose, whether it's on accident, whether you know. So it's like, man. You really gotta like, like if, if you're trying to self better yourself, like I, like I clearly am, or anybody like that, you gotta like continuously be focused on it. You, you as soon as you slip, then it's easy to, to lose track, and then and it seems like it might be a little, but over like even if even if the angle of which you're going off track is very slim, if you if you scale out, you end up being really far. Right, right. In those days. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm noticing this right now, those little days can add up to months and you don't even realize it. Yeah, easily. On easily. the good side That's... too, on the good and bad side. Yeah. So it's like, well, so those couple little days, man, those couple little days turn into a month and all of a sudden you're like, damn, I'm a month behind from what I should have been or where I thought I would have been. So it's like really... to, to and, and that's why it pays again. To go, I, I want to chime in. I, I want to hurt with the... Uh, with the whole environment thing, because that's why it pays to really be around those kind of people, because then you can like feed off each other's energy. Yeah. And when we kind of pop in on that moment, because we all go through those moments. Like I don't give a who you are, The Rock, Kevin Hart, they have moments where they need. Oh yeah, you at, need, you need, you need, you need. And and even if something small as like something small as uh, what you're listening to. Yeah. Check this out. Lately, I've been hella focused on the psychology of money, right? So I've been focusing really hard, understanding that and, crypt and crypto. But then I was so, like, personally, the way I, the way I work, I was so focused on that 
that I like kind of slipped mentally on other things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Oh, no, okay. I'm, you, I'm you know, focused. Perfectly, I thought you were frozen. <laughs> I, think it's it. I was in full attention mode, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, you, know, you know what I'm saying? But it's true. So it's yeah. like, whoa, because it, the way I am, I, I go all in with whatever I'm doing. I like, I go all in. And then, man, I mean, I'm talking like for like a month and a half, I'm eight hours a day thinking about money psychology and, and money, right. right? And I stop listening to the people who keep me like, with the fire because all my fire is now laser focused on money. So it's like, whoa. So I had to make sure to dial it back some. If I could interject real quick. Um, so I think now that I think about what you just said even further, I think the next step for you might be to, is not to completely delineate from what you were hearing from those people who would give you that spark and motivation is to kind of put what they said, implement it into the new shit that you're learning. I think that's kind of how you put it on. It's not to be put to the side. It's like, okay, how can they, what they told me, be implemented into the money side of shit now? How can I go hard and be motivated and blah, blah, blah? You know what I'm saying? All of those concepts that you were learning. And I feel like that, that, can, show, that can show how this shit can actually be implemented into your business naturally without you even trying. You know what I'm saying? As you put into the money shit, you're um, you know, um, putting just as much effort into that and then including the other shit that you had going with the motivational stuff, you know, if that makes sense. Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. It's all part of it because to me, being dope or or just self-development is mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. It's all the leads, right? Yeah. So right, I need to find a way to, you know, here's the thing. I don't think that I, the way I go, I definitely can't focus like 10 straight hours without, without at least listening to some of the things, I, I need to do that for me. I, I just, I need to hear Les Brown. I need to hear Jim Rome in the morning, just even for like 10 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like I need to get up and, and, and here's what I know. Because my routine has been thrown off because of my move, I had a routine that I was, you know, boom, I, I wake up, I do this, I do this, I do this, but it, it, I haven't been able to do that as much. Right. I feel like, so the way I like got over that was just by laser focusing on the money thing. Which is good because I'm learning. A, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot about crypto. I'm learning a lot about money. Like I'm, I'm learning a lot about the the first principles of Bitcoin and why it's the thing, uh, which is dope because now I, I'm knowledgeable of it more so. But it's like, damn! But you can't slip on the other shit because you still have a business about helping other people get over the pain of others. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? Like the right. whole brand also about that too. So right. it's just a learning experience. I could word it the way I want to, but I really, I really, even the way I implement with my business, it's always about how can I implement everything into it. So it's never anything. It's like every concept that I learned, it has to be put into this pot that is called Pretty Cool Apes for now. Overall, right. Pretty Cool Apes tell us conceptually, but cares none. For example, I have this concept of just all people in their in their businesses that they can create. Of just everything that you're into, throw it into the pot. So crypto, it should be thrown into there. The motivational stuff, it should be thrown into there. But I think it all, it all is the same language we're speaking because this is all human created, just concepts, you know what I'm saying? So it all is related. If you're a person, you can combine all this shit together and it can be distributed, you know? So it's just, I just feel like there's ways to, I feel like there's a code, a way, a cheat code or something like that, that, you know, successful people use to like obtain all the knowledge and still put it into place at the same time. Like I'm thinking of a Mark Cuban who reads such and such hours a day, but still gets all the, you know, billions of dollars worth of work done a day. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking that there's a way to like transition knowledge into the business in a way, like by, by. Well, like for instance, you know, when I post anything or, you know, see, see here's an, and it's kind of a little different subject, but same subject. Yeah, where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I have comedy and I have my motivation and lately it's been financing. Right, because the brand is just a, it's just an extension of who I am. But and I post about all three of those. I post yeah. funny comments. I'll, I'll post something about hey, y'all need to get y'all. I'm trying to get my money. I'm trying to learn this. I'll talk about you know relationships. So I, I like to put all the stuff about the topics that I talk about. I mean, we got a podcast, right? But uh, I mean, for me personally, because I, I I put all the things I learned out into to everyone else. So, like, as far as what I'm teaching and what I'm putting out there, I feel like I am trying to get it all in one pot. I'm talking about for me personally, when I wake up in the morning, 
I need to be better at doing the things that I know that keep me that keep you going. Right, right, right. And and I and I realized within since we had that talk the other day, is that I need to make sure that I'm still listening to the things that keep me going while gotcha. still at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder. Like okay, I, I wonder this then. I, I, this is a good subject actually because it's getting my it's getting me working a little bit. I wonder is there a transition? This is just me flying off the wall, but I wonder if there's a transition to where you become that motivation. And your and your your business per se becomes that kind of motivation for you, that word you need to hear, or that you know what I mean. Although I understand what you're saying, like we need to hear these things literally. But I wonder if there's a some type of because I've been trying to think of like hmm, building or how do people in this position think? You know what I mean? And how do they actually get these concepts and things together and done? Because it's a it's a it's a lot to put in the pot, but people do it. You know, people create full stadiums worth of concepts and put it into one pot you know what i mean <laughs> so it's like this shit can be done but how do they think and how do they get it done i know it's possible so um i say all that to say i, I know that there's a way to get it done to, and to cover our ground about me, D, i'll tell you what my problem is i already know for a fact i already know for a fact what's exactly up with me it's it's a matter of consistency right it's okay. a matter of doing the things that make me feel accomplished. And like I said, although I was learning a lot okay. about okay. how to keep money, right? So I'm not, a, I'm not completely just wasting my time. Like I'm focused, but I still need to make sure to take care of my basic things that I gotta do. So for right. instance, when I wake up in the morning, write down my daily, what I gotta get done. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like something that small, that small, which is, I, I think most people don't do that. Right. But when I was doing that consistently, uh -huh. every day, I, if the, the vibe, my, 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 my mojo was gone. And even sometimes on my, uh, on my list, I'll put something small, like right in my journal. And here's the thing I've, I've written in my journal a lot of times, but I didn't write it on that sheet in the, in the first place. So it's like, I didn't, I haven't set up my day and, and I realized that I've been kind of walking through my day without a plan more so than I have. And I think the reason why is because of the mood. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I need to get back into a, a, a plan, having a, a strategy to get more out of my day. So, and I think that that's where the little bit of the down, I you know, I'll be vulnerable. I'm gonna keep it 100 to everybody, For sure. you know? Uh, cause I know I'm, I'm motivating for other people. Right. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So I got to keep finding ways to make sure that I'm motivated if mm -hmm. I'm going to be you know, on the forefront, but for anybody listening, I do believe everyone goes through those at some point. Right. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why I like to be honest about, you know, like the last month and a half or so I haven't felt as ambitious as I typically do. And I think it really stems from, it's all, it's still my fault. I don't get, I can give a fuck about my circumstances or whatever. At the end of the day, I could still get that paper down. I could still write down my goals. So I don't give a fuck if I got to wake up outside, I could still wake up outside and write them damn things on my paper. Right, you right, 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 right. So from not letting the outside circumstances stop me from doing the things I know I, I got to do. You know what? I had a concept that's been kind of keeping me a little motivated lately um, through through little downtimes here and there is try to motivate myself with thoughts of doing things that don't cost me money. And a lot of times you'll just do shit that's just needed, that's just needed to be done, that you haven't done, that you put off. It's not even about going out to go do some shit or something like that. It's like just shit that you haven't done. And you you realize like there's so much stuff that needs to be um done. Uh, done well i'm looking for a better, better word like manufactured or something like that like just nurtured or something like that it's just so many things that needs to be nurtured in your life and and that mm. automatically kind of motivates you just what things can i do that don't cost money just as much as possible throughout your day just try one of those and you'll spend money and things like that but just try to think about the things that you'll do that don't cost money so it'll be i don't know um 
picking up that, like taking out that garbage that was just there or writing down that note that you said you wanted to write or, okay, let me get up and take that shower. Let me not lay here because it doesn't cost me money to do this or like just something like that. Does it cost me money to do this? It's like a game that I've been starting to play with myself just to kind of make sure that I'm handling all of my maintenance. That's the word that I was looking for. Maintenance of my life. And that way it kind of naturally keeps me motivated by just thought, you know? Mm. And then you probably realize how much, like if you're not focused on that, how much that you're not, that you can do and you're not. Right, right. Like I tried it yesterday and I woke up and I'm over here. I, I, I rode out to do my composting, got that shit done, got some bank stuff done, got some, got some, a lot of credit card shit done, got some laundry stuff done, photography shit zoom meetings like all type of stuff just nitpicky shit <laughs> all type of stuff done because i'm just thinking about things that don't cost me money to necessarily do but that i've been putting off you know or right. that i'm out of whack with or that you know the scheduling you know how we get out of whack like you said um because things change like my my um i've been I've, i started working at the art institute well i just started working at uh, modeling there but it's going to start up more so in january so i've been going through the orientation process so my life has been still kind of going through the motions and stuff so this is kind of one of those concepts just to you know okay what can I do during a downtime to kind of like get my life still in order as I'm going through transition building my business still modeling building that business you know things like that right no that, that, that that's so let me ask you this do you think did you do that you do, are you a writer down in the morning or are you free free hand I'm I'm so heady of a person. I love I like have a I'm a sapiosexual. So <laughs> I love to be super heady and um like just mental. So I like to just be in my head about shit mostly. Um I try to write things down and I should be better at it, but I like to like think all day. I don't know. I just like the I like the physical part of thinking, if that makes sense. No, no I do too. Um but for me. I, I, feel, I feel like I like thinking about things that are interesting at the time, whereas me thinking about what I got to do, I don't personally find that as interesting as me thinking about how we're going to figure this podcast out. Like, I'd rather think about what are we going to think about today? What are we going to talk about? I like that thinking, but I'm like, damn, what I got to do today? I don't know if I get enjoyment from that. <laughs> what, don't get out of what do you have to do today? Yeah, right. Now, Would I'll say this. Will help you with, like a calendar schedule help you with that? Oh, well, and I'll like, 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 for instance, just got to write them down. And I know right. that when I started doing that. So that's what you mean, writing it down. That's what it all was. Okay, I get you. For me, I need to write it down. One, because I'll, you know, I don't got the greatest memory. And then what happens is it, just writing the goals down, having a plan, a place. Because then, right. and, and even more than just you, you're going to physically get more shit done because you can see it. But then you feel better because you feel more productive, even if I really feel this way, even if you did the same amount of shit, but you wrote and wrote some down and you didn't write some down. Right. Let me rephrase that. Let's say this person fin accomplished everything and they wrote it down. This person, this person accomplished the same shit, but he didn't write it down. I feel like the person who wrote it down would see how much they physically got done easier than the person who would have to remember how much they got done. Or, or how about okay. especially? Yeah, if you're talking, can see it, yeah. They can definitely see it better. Yeah, so you're still going to be productive and all that, but I just feel like, man, I, I personally, maybe this way my brain thinks. Right, I'm right. Like, man, I got 15 things that needed to be done today, done today, whereas, man, what did I get done today? Man, this is, you know? So I feel like that's just where I come from. Right, uh, right, right. Here's just the facts. Here's just the facts. When I was laser focused and did that shit for three straight weeks, mm -hmm. I felt, you know what I'm saying? I got more shit done. And yeah. I haven't been as consistent doing that every day. I haven't got as much shit done and I haven't felt as productive. Right. You know what I'm saying? Still went to the gym, still got stuff done. But if I'm being honest, I didn't get as much done as I know I could have. Right, because it wasn't something that was locked down, written down. You know what? I think I talk to myself a lot too and that kind of gets me motivated <laughs> like when i know i gotta do <laughs> i know i gotta do shit get shit done like the area i'm just in my head a lot man it's just i just think it's a cool way to just look at life just look at yourself like a character and just motivate yourself and shit. Like i do like that like, realizing you know, like I, it's a bad it's a it's been a um 
I keep forgetting my words, but uh, taboo to for people to, you know, talk to themselves and, you know, just be present with themselves and shit like that. It's so weird, but that's like the, it's, it's so fun to like live a life of just being in your head and really taking care of yourself, you know, as a character, as a person, as a, as a person that you care about, you know? So I don't know. Right. Well, so I just heard this the other day, man, this shit was powerful. He was like, some, I forgot the dude's name, but he goes, the worst advice you can give someone is, but is it going to make you money? Like, don't, don't do something if, if, if it's not profitable. And the guy mm. was like, that's so right. Cause I've heard that before. Like, Oh, don't do that because you can't make money from that industry. Mm. And, it, and it's like, it's okay. like saying well, that's actually terrible advice because you, literally you can monetize anything. Anything is monetizable. Right. And there's a billionaire billionaire as fuck off of this alone. And this is a button. That I that broke off one of my clothing, my piece of clothing, like billion dollar industry right there. Somebody wait, said, then, wait, wait, check this out. Even in that little button, there's like probably 10 businesses in there. That's somebody who made the hole. That's somebody who made this little screen. <laughs> All that. The paint, the hood. Right, right, right. All that. Dude, there's people online right now getting paid to do what we're doing right now. Yes, absolutely. They just, they just exactly. People getting paid to have sex. People get mm -hmm. paid to, 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 to try food out. Literally, people playing video games, video games online. So it's like, that is bad advice. That's terrible advice. That's that's so small-minded of advice. Right? It, it's all, it's, it's, if you understand that money is just the system of currency, just like it is, literally currency, it's supposed to be a current. It, all it is is a conceptual current. It's just supposed to move. And everything that we have ever made is just rocks that we move. This is this ain't shit for the rock that we didn't move, you know what I mean? And traded for it conceptually. So everything is up grass. You just gotta make a, a, a plan out of it. And everybody has that ability, especially with this shit nowadays. You know, I've been uh like I told you, I've been I'm trying to read up on the uh, the psychology of money, like what the fuck it actually is. Yeah, uh, you know, because like I said earlier, I'm getting to the whole big uh the whole cryptocurrency world, trying to learn that because you know, the whole metaverse thing. And uh, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to understand it from a core principle. Like, what is it? And the guy yeah. named Sailor, who I've been listening to, he was like, well, let's talk about what money is. And, and, and his definition of money is the highest form of energy that human beings can channel. And I was like, OK, like this is a deep thing. I'm like, OK, because when let me what would you say? What, what is money if I asked you? Energy. It's not, it's the energy that humans have created to to transact with each other or to just work with each other in an in an orderly fashion. Right. And it's and, and, and that's why it makes sense when he said I'm like, oh that does make sense. So if 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 you understand that money is just energy, that's all it is. It's just a way to exchange. So I I put some energy into something. You want this thing, so now we need to exchange the energy that it took to make this thing, right? Or to do this thing. So once I've started, so so now that I'm like, wait a minute. So everything is, I believe everything is energy. Everything scientifically, everything is energy, right? Atoms and shit. And I and I believe that. So and I believe thoughts are energy because everything is energy. You, whatever you put your mind to and focus, then you can get it. Because it's just energy. You just have right. to learn how to get energy and, and, and make it come to fruition. So that's why it's like, no matter what you do, as long as you put energy into it, and the more laser focused the energy is, the quicker you're going to get that. Absolutely. Right? So it's like, I really believe anything's obtainable. It's just a matter of staying consistent by putting your energy and laser focusing it. Yeah, yeah. And I money's no As a matter of fact, money is... Like we're saying, is the highest form of that that human beings can channel. Mm -hmm. So, like, so if you just put the think about it, if I'm if so the the energy it took for me to come up with the idea to have a clothing brand, to to put the energy physically on the products, yeah. You see I mean? So it it took energy to do that, and then someone else got some energy from the thoughts, spent some of their energy. Mm -hmm. To, mm. They want to pay for that energy. That's all it is. I'm like, yes. so all you got to do is just 
focus your energy somewhere. Yep. Spread your energy out in the world, and then people will, like, in exchange, give you some of their energy for it. Yes, they will bounce back off of you automatically, and you have no idea how fast and hard that bounce back will be when you put the energy towards it. And energy right. in all shapes and forms and fashion, all healthy energy, you know? Right. Oh, my God. Because everybody is out here putting, well, conceptually, you would want to put your energy into something. You know what I mean? So if everybody's doing that, then you, you, you realize that everybody's playing their part. And it's like a puzzle damn near. And it's like a cheat right. code damn near, you know? Yes. Oh. So that's why I'm like, I'm just so, that's probably why I went so hard with the psychology. Because I'm like, wait a minute. It's just a matter of how you think about it and, and the energy you put towards it. So I went so focused, but then I, I slept on some of the other parts that are still important to me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. still important for me to find, one, it's still important for me to make funny videos. It's still important to me to make sure no matter what, to do this podcast. It's still, but you know what I'm saying? So it's still important to me to, you know, the, to, to get the shit on YouTube. So I got to make sure to not forget about the other things that are important because, because I believe in, if you laser focus, I, I believe in that so much <laughs> that I like forgot about the other things that are equally as important. Right. And so you literally like, count. It, the, 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 my whole issue is, 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 is organization of, of my day. The more right. I'm organized day, the better my day is. And I feel like that's the way with anybody. Mm -hmm. you, just, you get organized. Once you get organized in so many things, so many, it gets easier to accomplish it. Even, even for instance, for sure. I was listening to uh, David Shands on, I think it was this morning or yesterday morning on the morning meetup. And he was like, oh no, it might've been a TikTok actually. Somebody was like, well, how much, so you want to make $300,000 a year. How much, how much money do you need to make today going forward? Right, like how much have you broken it down? And the, and the guy, he was like, "Don't bullshit me. How much does it take?" He goes, "Do you know?" He goes, "No." He goes, "I know. That's the problem." He goes, "And you're not not normal for not knowing that. Most people don't have a goal, and then they don't break it down to it's going to cost me so and so x dollars per day to get here." Right. You know, and the reason why is because you don't have a plan. And then sometimes when we're thinking that big number, whatever our goal is at the end, like oh, you know, we want three hundred thousand dollars. And it seems sometimes that number, because it can seem so big, it seems harder to get. But then when you break it down to, let's say that comes out to $130 a day, mm -hmm. I would say that seems more like you can reach that. Right, right. Let's say if I'm talking about hoodies, you know, I could sell three hoodies and hit that. You know, you got to do it every day and all that. So it's like, oh, and then go back to the original point, it's just having it organized is such a huge advantage that mm. I don't always take advantage of. Mm. And but when I do make an effort to take advantage, I do feel like a billion percent better. Right. So organization is probably my biggest bugaboo that I will find a way to work on. There's people to help you out. There's virtual assistants. There's, there's ways to get it done. It yeah. is a matter of get it done, you know? Right. And isn't that the beauty of what you've been going through, though, this past year, as far as like developing the who's and not the how's and figuring out that if you do have those issues, those pain points, you know. So that's why I think that I think that the whole concept of even the pain points that we were really getting into earlier were kind of wayside, probably because of the mood, because of the environment, man. I'm telling you, you know, it just really broke out the concept of environment. And how the the how we even talked about it being from one place to you know another place to forget even about one uh, your own place you know so it's, it's just a it's a lot that can go into it when we when the environment is up in the air so I get right. that kind of sure and I, and I really want people who are listening to this to understand that like because I know a lot of people look up to me as their source of inspiration right, right. to to get going I got a text this morning somebody goes man listen to your videos kept me going and you know and I'm sitting here reading that. I don't want to say feel like a fraud because I'm still getting shit done, but it's like, man, I, you know, that pushes me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But I, I want to hear people, I want people to hear, it's like, no. So when you're having that shit time, for whatever reason, 
that's that's some normal human being shit. You know what I'm saying? Emotional no, shit. But this, okay, I, I swear to God, bro, this is this is so good because I still the way my brain works, I still see that this can be transitioned. This shouldn't be something that's forgotten about. It should be something that's transitioned into the business. This could be something that's like you create that for yourself. You create, you know, we talked about this before, but a form for yourself for the motivational morning text or whatever have you. Like this stuff is to be implemented into cares none at all costs. Anything that's a pain point to you, cares none is responsible now. Like that's you get your motivations, of course, from your sources for sure, and you implement. But I think going forward, how how people, the successful people build this shit. They put these, their energy, that energy even, even that negative one, into their brand and use their community to really build them up in those times. So I think even in your case, you do have a, you are an inspiration to people. And when they do send you those things and you feel like a, you know, fraud, for lack of better words, I think you, it would be nice for them to have a place to go to for you to go up literally and create a part of your brand and them to go to where you can get that inspiration and talk to them directly. Like you are that, you create that for them. You are the inspiration that creates that. So I, I still think like that's the way to think about it. It's not like to think about it so separate, but like, how can I put this shit into it? That's what Cares None was built for. Right. And also at the same time, still helped me. And it helps you. That's what it was built for. The whole, don't forget that. We built this shit to keep us sharp. So any pain point that we have and that we know we are motivational and inspirational, any pain point that we have, Cares None and Pretty Poor Ace is made for that. It's made to be motivational. You know, so it's made to put your pain and uh, pleasures in there. Right. And, and, and then it still comes down to energy, right? Ain't it all? Ain't it all? <laughs> you can put all your shit in there, Chris. You can put all right. your shit in there. Just don't hear it. You ain't got to separate it. You ain't got to, because I think maybe maybe that that's an insecurity. If, let's just be open. That's an insecurity if you're thinking like in those fraudulent terms. And I just use that for lack of better words, okay? But that's just insecurity type of thing. But if you to throw that insecurity into cares none, then that becomes a part of the team. And that becomes a part of their story too. It's like, okay, well, we gonna put this thing together and we gonna motivate each other, you know? Right. Yeah, because because like my issue is like, see, I, I'm I'm an interesting individual. Cause like, for instance, when I was playing basketball by myself two days ago, right? Went to the gym and was just shooting around. But to myself, no one's in the gym, it's just me. I'm like, I'm gonna do suicides every 15 shots. Mm -hmm. But like, no one made me do that. I was just something like, you know, I, I wanna get a little, I wanna, I wanna push myself while no one's looking kind of thing. And like, I can do that kind of shit all the time. I, I'm so good at like extreme, I can put yeah. I can extreme things, but then there's other times that I'm like, like for instance, eating bad, right? It's like, I have an issue with that because that's so much of my energy mentally going into that. And it's 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 harder for me to to just cold turkey that. It's harder for me to hit that 100% for some reason. Whereas I can go in that gym and go kill my body. You know, that's easy for me to do, even though it physically is, is you know, a lot to do. So it's just yeah. like I want, sometimes I can go so hard, but then on other times I don't. You know? You know part of being human though right so i know it i know but it's like for some reason i like want to go hard at everything all the time and it's so funny because what you even listen to the people that you listen to they even tell you that they're like if you think about it it's like why are you not going fucking hard are you going hard enough are you going hard enough are you going hard enough and i get it like as a motivational tool i need to hear that stuff too i need to scroll and hear those things and listen to that and get those things but i also realize that i'm a human and I also realized that this is a fucking thing that I'm, that I'm being digitally put in front of that's telling me that constantly. So this is overload, really, honestly. And I have to realize that I am a human outside of that. So I get the uh, information that I'm receiving, but I also have to understand that that is overload that I'm receiving because I need that to hear that, but I have to bag out and be a human on outside of that metaverse too that I'm putting myself into. Because conceptually, excuse me, I need to talk a little faster. I mean, a little slower. Conceptually, <laughs> conceptually, this phone we're doing right now, this is the metaverse. It's just 2.0 version of it, you know? But we just need to realize that we can take this shit off and still be humans too. You know, that's all. 
Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And, and, and being and being like and mindful, right? Being in the moment. I heard something of the day, man. This shit was powerful too. He was like, uh, a way to feel better in life is to is to feel more moments. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna break that down. Where are you going with this? <laughs> he was like, people don't feel enough moments in a day. And you can still be productive. You can still get shit done, but you don't feel the moments. Like if you're on autopilot and you just knocked out your day, even if you got shit done, did you feel your day? Mm-hmm. For instance, like when you talk to someone, did you did you sit there and did you have this? Like right now, we are feeling this moment because we are having a podcast. We haven't had one in a while. I, I, it feels good. And, and we need to have more of those thoughtful moments is what he was saying. I'm like, that's a good point because whenever you do, whenever I do shit on autopilot, it don't feel as good as when I make a conscious effort to make moments, even if it's something small. Like, you know what? I'm about to just be in the moment and take care of this right now. And I just feel like when he said that, it kind of hit differently to me about we need to have more moment. Mm. When you say goodbye to someone, really say goodbye. When you say what's up, like really, really say what's up to them instead of that. You know how we, as humans, we go, oh, I'll holler at you. We take it for granted. And it's just like, man, you don't realize you don't realize how how, how easy it is to take shit for granted. And all of a sudden, three months is gone. Mm. And then like, we'd be even, like, hey, you're going by fast. Nah, my nigga, you, you, you just you just been autopilot. You've been autopilot, right, right. So, but I bet you if we had more like I'm about to embrace these moments more, the more we do that. I, it probably wouldn't feel as you wouldn't have that. Damn, time just flew. It's like, and I didn't do shit. Well, all you did, you just was on autopilot. Wow, Click, the movie Click by Adam Sandler is the perfect movie for this. <laughs> that's one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies, by the way, but that's the perfect movie for this. But that's, but that's so true, though. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, you know, I want to have more moments, more real moments. Mm. And, and that autopilot shit, man, that, that's, whew. What's been helping me meditation? Helped me a lot with that. Yeah. Yeah. Being able to to like get in a moment to, to get here. You know, that's the whole that's the whole idea that I do behind meditation. Just let me get here. Let me get here. Cause it's so easy to to think about you know all this, but it's hard. It's, sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to stay here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but the more I've been practicing and working on it, the easier it is for me to have these kind of like thoughts like, oh man, I want to be more moment. You know, even if I have, you know, even if I'm having stacks, I feel like I could be more in the moment now, which makes it to me more powerful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas if you just, you know, if you just going with the motion, that it don't feel as good that way. And I don't think nothing though. Nah, nah. Yeah. So I don't know how do you feel. How do you feel about that, man? Having more moments and making the feeling. His his whole thing was feeling your day as much as you can. How how does that sound to you? I'm really big. I've always been a person and people who know me close, they probably heard me say this, but I'm big on protecting my memories, which means that I always, I love memories. Like I'm obsessed with that shit. That's why I'm so heady because, and I I also am an artist too. So I like to, you know, have shit physical to see, but like, I like thinking about my moments and I like, so I'm really into creating moments in special times all the time. That's kind of my, my expertise and shit. (laughs) I feel. So I'm really right. big on that as well. So memories, moments, um, taking advantage of every day, all those things, being present, which is the main point. Those things all count when it comes to making moments and and protecting them. So I, I'm you know, all. Done. Check this out, D. Tell me, I I be having this thought about about memories. Sometimes they can be so good that it's almost it, it can feel like damn, it's fucked up. Like like for instance, Limitless Weekend, right? <laughs> One one of, if not the best memories of my life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was such a cool time. It was such like a powerful moment, right? We're talking about moments. That was a powerful moment that we all were feeling. And the fact that like that's gone, sometimes that's sad. <laughs> it's like, uh-huh. it, that was such a powerful you know, but it's, I love it's, that though, man. I love that though. You know what? But you know why I love that though is because I love history. So I love when shit, when my moments can become history. I feel like, oh my god, I get to be in a history book of my own. Like, <laughs> so I love memories for that. I feel like every memory becomes my own personal artifact. Oh, so I, okay, 
Yeah. And I love that I can look back on shit and be like, damn, man, look at what we did. Like, as we, I want us to get old and be like, look at our young ass over there turned in Vegas, like, limitless and shit. Look yeah, at our like love. Your, your NFT, your, your non fungible token. Exactly. And eventually, that's going to be your NFT. When You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what this is all about, making all of your moments become. That's what that's what I said. That's what I wanted to start emphasizing with people with us to start emphasizing building a brand based on yourself, because you're going to be profitable just based on your own memories. Mm. You know what I mean? Like on some digital shit, all of the shit that we've collected from this time that this stuff started from Facebook time and early 2010, 20, you know, all that stuff. We're going to be able to put this stuff into monetary things. It just depends on what where you want to put this energy. So let's just say, for example, cares none. You keep going with this shit, Chris, and it keeps elevating like it does. You get into the NFT market. You don't think that everything you've ever posted is now monetizable? No, I do believe that. I believe in NFT. You know what I mean? Especially within the metaverse. So I love memories because of that. And now that we can create a, mon a money aspect to something that's just you, you can literally get paid. Everybody can just to be you. Right. You know what I mean? So... I just think it's possible. I think I, I, I think we talked about this before, but one guy goes, be yourself so much that you get paid for it. Absolutely. And it's really about to fucking turn up right now. <laughs> right. I, as a matter of fact, I feel like the more I'm me, just in life in general, the better my life is. Yeah. I, you know what? If I can add to that, I think maybe a problem that because I think people say that a lot, but it's kind of broad. So I want to like dig a little deeper on that. I think maybe people have a problem with um, not figuring out who they are. I, I think that's I think it's not accepting or not being open to who they are. Probably. Mm. So I think um, another good movie by Jim Carrey. Yes, man, is one of my most motivated movies of all time because it's conceptually just like just choose to say yes. You, you just anything that's interesting, just lean into it. Anything that's interesting to you, just lean into it a little bit. Just choose to say yes a little bit more. You don't know how much you're going to like some shit. If you just keep leaning, you you might just really develop some shit over time. Everything takes a little more time, you know, but just say yes. Just choose to say yes a little more. And I think that can probably be something that is hurting people or hindering them from actually, you know, really conceptually saying just be myself so hard till I get paid for it. You know, like you really got to just say yes so hard till you get paid for it sometimes. Like, but within the realms of being yourself. Right, no, and that's true. Cause uh, I feel like even with the vulnerable stuff, I, I'm a big, I, I think the reason why a lot of people fuck with me, you know, I, I've been told this, but I'm just, you know, I'm assuming is that it ain't always peaches and cream with me. You know, like I was talking to somebody the other day and they was like, you know, like, anyone who's always positive, you know, I, I feel like they're full of shit. That's what that's what they said to me. And I was like, well, you might have the wrong understanding of what I believe. And, and I did, too, in the beginning of what I thought being positive means all the time. Like, Eric, I would call you a positive individual. I would call myself a positive individual. But we also recognize the fact that there's moments where it don't necessarily feel so positive. Absolutely. <laughs> So, but the difference between a person like you and I versus, you know, the naysayer is that we look at that not so positive moment and we find a way to make that shit positive. Mm -hmm. Because if we're being honest, all that bullshit, it's like your best teacher. It's like, it's like the, the best, mm -hmm. it's the best lessons. All the, the, the shit is where you learn the most from. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I call myself foolishly optimistic, you know what I'm saying? You know, but I think that that's, that doesn't mean that I don't realize, like I'm telling, even in the start of this podcast, I'm like, man, it's been a little rough mentally on me, you know what I'm saying? Be but you'd be damned if you don't hear me say, I'm not going to figure it the fuck out. Right. You ain't never going right. to be said that, like, you figure it out, that's what I'm saying, your energy, your, your environment, let me talk to D, let's get a podcast, let me be around my people, get right. your shit done. So you're never going to hear me say, oh, well, you know, it's over now. So in fact, no. you know, like bullshit. Look, bullshit, all that bullshit, like you said, that's just nature's way of teaching you. That's just the natural form of teaching you. All the bullshit happens, you learn from it and you move forward. You don't just stop. It's literally the most natural form, not written down, not even apparent. It's just 
bullshit is going to happen through life, but it's nature's way of teaching you. It's the natural parent. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and then there's that Michael Saylor dude who was talking about Bitcoin. Uh, he was like, what people fail to real like people run away from pain. And he goes, that you need pain. And he was talking about markets and shit like that. And you know, we need to feel pain in order to fix our issues, you know, financially. But but in, in life though, you gotta that that pain, whether it be physical, like listen, if I break my leg mm-hmm. on my foot and I walk on my leg, it's gonna be painful. But there's a reason for that. It's teaching you that you can't walk on it to, so it can fix. Yeah. So it's like. You know, and I, there's probably reasons you might know this more than me about there's reasons why we we stay away from pain, right? We we don't want pain, but it's like, bro, all of my good shit came after pain. I think, okay, uh, let me elaborate on that then. Pain, like I said, I think it's nature's greatest teacher. It's just like, okay, Chris, I'm doing this. If I do this so much, naturally, pain. Is gonna let me know, like, okay, this ain't where your finger's supposed to be at at this point, at this point, at this point. You know what I mean? So pain is the next motherfucker already. But I think it's beautiful conceptually. Like, I think that's gonna be my word for today. But conceptually, I think it's beautiful that humans have taken this and put it into a concept of mental. So, like, when we talk about pain points, so I can start my whole day by just solving pain points. I can look at this concept and just, okay, let me solve what what it hurts. What hurts a little bit? Let me make that not hurt. Let me, or or I can look at it this way. In life, if I live a life, it's gonna be pain points. It's gonna be times where shit is gonna fuck up, but you just fix it. You just don't bend as much or you fix that or you let it heal or you give it time or something like that, you know? But it's funny how we create those natural concepts, those natural laws of pain, and we put it into marketing. We put it into our daily routines. You know everything, so we it's, it's really close to us, man. It's just, we're so fucking mental as a species, though. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny. It's like we, man. You know that's interesting. It's like we find way as as, as a species, like we're just dealing with pain all the time. All the time. That's what this world, this earth is like, bro. Survival is pain. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's us. It's us. Even when you're wealthy, like we put it into money you know, things like that. Like, you just, it's just like your, I'll put it like this, in the ancient Rome, and then this is going to go back a little bit, but one of the, what the, okay, let me word this right, the Colosseums, the stuff that we have today, like the United Center, for example, the stadiums all across the world, soccer fields, all that stuff, it all really started with the concepts of like the Colosseums built in Rome. So the gladiators and shit like that. But what the emperors would do they were so rich and wealthy and shit and the game for the games, they would just have people kill each other inside the rings and shit for entertainment. So it's like, even in, even in wealth and not needing to motherfuckers to kill themselves, that's you create that even as a form of like pain as a form of entertainment. That's you know crazy. what I mean? <laughs> it's like, you don't even need pain. You can be, you can be an emperor having solved all pain points for yourself and still desire pain to be, a way of solving or entertainment or of something. So it's like a conceptual thing, a conceptual relationship that's innate within us. Like we just so used to just pain being around or solving a pain point or something to do with pain. Right. So like, so let's, let's try to get to some practical stuff. What, what do you think is a good way to help someone solve a mental pain point? A mental pain point? Let's, let, okay. Um, solve a mental pain point you know what I, to own a, for a very let's let's warm it up then how about that um one thing you told me a couple months ago has been sticking with me for for a while and it's the concept of uh like the thoughts just being a thought and it being so whimsical because we have those literally just spitfire probably about hundred thousand times a day you know oh, what yeah. i mean they come though they're not as important as we make them seem and that's literally so true and I was like man it's just little baby stories that we just can just always constantly tell ourselves little by little every day all day and I'm like man and we just bounce right in and out of them and they don't have something else can happen right away and our mind completely changes right. about what 
feeling so heartfelt about. So I, I think it's kind of being aware of just you as a person. I really like for people to just try to get outside of the, themselves for a second and just look at themselves as a, a, a as something that they have as they have more control of than they think they do. They think they don't actually, you know. Yeah, and and, and I would add to that um, what helps me rather is understanding that you all, whatever that mental pain is. If you are alive listening to this right now, you've survived all of them your whole life. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's never quite as fucked up as you think it is, ever. As a matter of fact, a lot of times, and Will Smith, he's, he's conceptualized this perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> he said, bliss always comes right after the highest point of of, of of anxiety, the highest point of, oh, fuck. But then right after that, and he was talking about skydiving. He was going through all these emotions of, like, oh, I'm about to hop out of a plane and it's, you're freaking out. You couldn't sleep the night before and all this shit was crazy. And he was like, you know, it's a scary thing, you think, right? And then he jumped and then literally his highest point of fear, he jumped and then realized it was the most blissful thing he's ever done in his life. Mm -hmm. And then he even, it was almost calm. And mm. so the lesson he got from that was all those feelings that he had leading up to that, the, the highest point of his fear were not real as far as like a tangible thing that the thoughts you were having the night before, the thoughts oh. you had getting on the airplane, the thoughts you had right before you about to hop off do not equate to the feeling that you had once you jumped and realized it was never, this is actually fucking dope. And I've realized that from a lot of my things that when I just faced that, what I believe to be fear and pain, right? And I beat it and I faced it no matter what it was, it was never quite as bad. Let me give you an example. I put off, I, we probably spoke to this before in the podcast, but I put off talking to your mom, who's the, our tax person, because I didn't, I didn't want to face that pain of knowing that I have not, I wasn't on my shit. I didn't want to face that shit, right? I didn't want to face how, how it was going to feel to, to me thinking that she was going to judge me, like, oh, look at you, you, you fucking idiot, you grown ass man. That's what I thought. Those are the thoughts that, and, you know, but those aren't, that, that's just a thought that, that oh. I'm not even necessarily in control of, right? Right. So then when I finally said, you know what, I'm just going to face it, I'm going to get, I'm just going to do it. That energy that I thought was going to be there wasn't even remotely there at all. Like, and then when you think about it, logically speaking, her job is to help you fix that, not judge you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because she wouldn't be in a very good business if she was going around saying, damn, you, you, damn, you. <laughs> she wouldn't even be in business if that was the case. <laughs> right? So this is something that my brain made me, that those thoughts that popped into, I didn't, control, I didn't want to think that. They just kind of popped into my head. And then I realized they ain't even true. It's never as bad as you think it is, ever. It, for me, at least, none of my issues are never as bad as you think they are, ever. And so that's, that's what I, how, sorry. I was going to say, mm -hmm. that's what I of you saying, like, it's just the thought resonated so well with me because it's like, man, I can think that, yeah, and I have every right to think that, that, that she could say that, she could think that about me, but she could also think that, and that could very well be true, too. Or she could think that. It could be so many possibilities, but you can't be so committed to digging into that hole of this one thing you know what i mean it could be it could be it's an imagination like just get the shit done that's the most important part of it you know and she's created and just allowing yourself to understand like she's created this thing for you to 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 solve that pain point and i want to say something else about the pain point thing uh uh what was it i, I forgot what it was but yeah go ahead well <laughs> so here's another thing about people in to go back to cares none right people's opinions and thoughts and shit it's like, if, if we can agree that our thoughts are not, we're not in control of those thoughts, right? Because they can pop in and then we, because we want to think about our breathing, but then we'll talk, about, we'll think about something else. So we yeah. can't control them, right? We cannot control them. They're not a real thing. Mm -hmm. So if we know that about ourselves, that means we're just, we're a human being like everyone else. That means that they're going through the same feelings. So like, 
even if even if they thought something that was fucked up that you thought about yourself, one, they can't control that thought. And two, that's not their thought either. That's just a random thought. So yeah. you might be thinking that, that specific person and thinking, man, this person is thinking this about me, right? So even at the very core, let's say they their thought was thinking that, that's not even their thought. Mm-hmm. That, that popped into their head. That's not, right. that's not them. Even if they're thinking that, which is really deep. But let's, let's be really honest. If you really want to break it down, the truth, the core of that is the thoughts that you think other people are thinking are actually thoughts that you think about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Ain't that the truth? So like, oh man, they probably thinking I'm fat. Well, you probably think that you're fat. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I got a stuttering problem. They're going to laugh at my stutter. No, you think you got a stuttering problem. And you think you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. you don't know what the fuck they think. And you physically, you don't know. You'll never know what another person thinks for sure or fat because you can't be in their brain thinking it. Right. So it's like, Oh, once I started getting, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. If yeah. We, these, we give these thoughts a little bit too much power, but, but here's, the, here's what's fucked up. The thoughts do have power. So it's... That's, it's uh, I was going to elaborate and kind of triple back with the pain point thought that I had. I was going to ask you, do we need these pain points then? Because okay. do, we, do you think that we've utilized these things to actually... It's like we, we make these, we create these pain points in our head to kind of... Some people are using it as motivational factors, but we have to have that in order to do something. Because like you said, when Will, the way Will Smith would describe it is, it's bliss on the other side of that. But if he didn't have to go through all of that shit in his head, would it be as blissful? Yeah, see, that, I, see that's a great thought because I'm all about, you know, would there be positive without negative? Would there be, rank, you know, so would there be night yeah. without day, would there be good without evil? Yeah, no, if, I, I believe- if it's a sunny day, then what's the sunny day? Huh? I said, if every day is a sunny day, then what's the sunny day? We we talked about this on the pod. Do you think that people, you know, uh, treasure, you know, San Diego weather as much the people in San Diego or for people here? I was like, oh no, in Chicago, we probably really treasure our summers, whereas they probably don't treasure the everyday eighty degrees as much as we treasure our eighty degree, eighty degrees. So, no, that's a good point, man. I, I, I personally believe. Pain points are needed. But I think that the goal is to mm-hmm. understand and then just try to then beat them. But, and for certain things, but some things like running, I feel like you need to hit the pain point in order to get the, the, the effect from it. You need to feel like when I go to the gym, if I'm, if I'm pumping iron and I just do it six times and I don't feel nothing, then nothing happened. You you have to feel the pressure in order for it to work. Mm. Right? Think about it. Like if you were lifting weights and you just did it three times and you did that every day, you would get no results from that. You only get results from when you pumped it to the point where your body's like, oh, okay, I feel this, the blood's pumping now. Right. You know? And so you, it's like you need to feel some bullshit. That's why I lean into some shit. However, but there's also times where you want to kind of ease it you know, you want to try to fix it out. So that's probably, that's a good yeah. thought. Yeah. What do you think is a good ratio of warning pain points versus solving them? Well, I'm I'm still kind of fucked up by us needing them. <laughs> so uh, let me see, wanting pain points. I think, I think I'm still trying to get used to recognizing that it is just pain points that we need to solve. I think I've always, I think we've, I think human humanity has have conceptually just solved pain points. I think that's what nature does. It just has a point, a pain point, and it just solves it just naturally or or in its own way, you know what I mean? And that's kind of how our brains work. Um, but the ratio, I think they have to be equally as invested, man. Like, but you gotta solve shit, man. I don't know. That's a good question. I, I know. <laughs> you have to solve shit. But then in order to sometimes do, like, for instance, sometimes <laughs> to solve a pain point, you got to put yourself in some pain to solve that one. Right. But how much? Right. Damn. Because you, you need to get, but you need some wins. You need to get shit solved. You can't, it's like, you need time to, no, you can't, no, damn, I, I think you need 50-50. I'm going to say 50-50. Yeah, I would say 50-50 is a good number. <laughs> <laughs> 
do some 70 and 30 shit or something, but I think 50 50 gonna have to be. Because yeah, you, you can't you can't do you can't be in too much pain. You can't put yourself in too much pain either. Because sometimes, like I said, a lot of this shit be us. It don't even be the outside sources. So you can't put yourself in too much mental pain. You need a little bit to kick you in the ass and be like, all right, come on. And sometimes it's gonna life gonna get deep already anyway. Right. So you know, you need equally as much. Just you need to. I think it's. I think in saying that, I think what motivates me is just the doing side of shit, and I think that helps me kind of find pain points. Mm. So I, I think probably that's what I do. Now that I think about it, I probably lead with like trying to solve shit because I use my imagination a lot. I'm always heady, so I'm like, oh man, what can I create? What can I? I can imagine this. Okay, how do I do that? I don't have that. So what's the pain point? Now let me go figure out how to do that. So I just allow my imagination to lead first and then solve the pain point. And you know, imagination is one of the 16 laws of success, David. Hey, my nigga, that's what they say. A lot of people say it. A lot of people say it. <laughs> so, D, man, tell, tell them where they can find you, man. Hey, prettycoolapes.com, official website, all things right there. Give me that. All right, what about some social medias? All things pretty cool age.com, baby. Find me there. Social media is included. That's why I want people to go. It's all it's all website traffic these days, baby. It's, it's metaverse. That's what we're focused on right now. Putting our shit into our own pockets. What we need to start doing is really going heads in on this metaverse. You saw, did you see they somebody bought one point something million dollars worth of land on the metaverse? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's oh yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be on a regular. That's gonna be in a, but that's gonna be our, our thing. But this is you know what? I've been big on this concept. I need to start, we, excuse me, I want to use that word more so too. We need to start practicing like um, like being for real, I want to say business owners, but just being the boss of our shit. Like working with like uh, just, hmm, how can I word it better? Just like metaverse type of shit. Like being, because everybody on the metaverse is going to be able to be Facebook or be, everybody's going to be able to be Instagram or a social media platform. They're going to be their own version of that. So we need to get in a, habit of creating platforms that are owned by us such as a web domain a website things like that social media is something we're going to use to market things but to to for real market we need to start putting our web 3.0 hats on and i want people to kind of conceptually get that on our next episode we gonna we should dive in on web 1.0 2.0 3.0 and get into a little bit More. of that Cause I know uh, it's people are like what there's a web 3.0 like I didn't even know <laughs> like yeah because some people yeah. still stuck 1.0 so yeah we uh, are you just to we want to put it all together for people all right but we gonna be back minimum once a week even if we got to do the zoom we are gonna do it once a week you back uh mm. back and play you can find me at uh, Chris Cares Nine on all platforms or on CaresNine.com uh, I do also have a new site coming pretty soon. Hey. Uh, still be cares none.com. Uh, and as always, <laughs> cares none. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. All right, Jake. All right, bye bye. Yes, sir.